Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, wild animals and all cattle, creeping things and flying birds. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His glory is above earth and heaven. Again, words from Psalm 148. As the peoples of God, we gather to offer worship to the one who alone is worthy of our worship. We gather not only to speak, but to listen, and to bend our hearts to obey. This short video segment will attempt to guide some meditation upon the scriptures today and to offer some possible ways of applying them. We begin with prayer. God of all creation, you are the source of all that's good in this life and in the life to come. You did not build a wall, but you broke down the barriers and enmities that divide us. You built a large table, opening it to persons of all languages and ethnicities. We seek your Spirit's guidance in this time. May my speaking and our hearing be inspired. We seek to glorify you in all things and we seek to obey more fully the command of our Lord that we should love. Help us, we pray. Amen. As the scriptures are presented in full in the first video today, the lectionary paraphrases, here I just offer you a short scripture summary. In Acts, we read the account of Peter regarding how he came to accept the hospitality of a Gentile sitting down to a meal with the family and thereby opened the gate of hospitality of the followers of Christ to include people of every nation. The bottom line is that God does desire fellowship with all humankind and uses us to build the bridges that make that possible. When we break down barriers and build bridges and larger tables, we're doing the work of God. In the reading from the Revelation, again, we see the inclusiveness proclaimed, announcing that God's purpose is to have intimate fellowship with the entire human family, providing to all the refreshment of that eternal spring giving life. Then in the Gospel, we find a last directive from Jesus prior to the crucifixion, letting us know the way in which others would discern that we indeed follow him. Do we love? I invite you to join me in prayer. Guide us into these words of Holy Scripture, O God, our Helper, that we might hear the message you intend for us today. Amen. You may have seen memes floating around the internet with the expression, if you have more than you need, build a longer table, not a higher fence. I don't know who coined that turn of phrase, but it is a good one and it is at the heart of the message of our reading from Acts today. Now, I've often said that one guiding principle for understanding and applying Scripture is to interpret the difficult in the light of what is plain. Another is to avoid taking a lone phrase or verse and building a whole scheme of theology around it. In the reading from Acts, Peter justifies his sitting down to eat with Gentiles on the basis of several evidences that God was working, and then asks, who was he to try to hinder God? First, he had a personal subjective vision, repeated three times, God saying, don't consider untouchable what I have made clean. Then, with synchronicity, he had people requesting his presence in another town up the coastaways. Then, he heard an account of a personal subjective message from God, given to this foreigner. And then God's Spirit was given to them as well. He took all of this to mean that God was at work, moving to expand the work of Christ beyond the confines of being just a small sect of Judaism. Now this really should not have been a surprise to any of the disciples. If they were to think back a bit, how many times had they witnessed Jesus working in this very way, extending the grace of God beyond the confines of the family of Abraham? Where do we start? At Nazareth, at the very outset of his ministry, Jesus had announced he would bring a ministry of healing not exclusive to those of Israel who presently found themselves under the boot heel of Rome, but inclusive of outsiders. 
just as had been the case with Elijah feeding the widow of Sidon and Elisha healing the Syrian leper. Then during his ministry, Jesus worked with the hated Samaritans, pointing his disciple to the harvest God was providing right there at the foot of Mount Gerizim, a place of worship scorned by the Jews. And he made several trips, quote, to the other side, working with people of the region of the Decapolis. This was not Jewish territory, but very Gentile. And in Capernaum, his base of operations, Jesus met the need of a child of a Roman centurion, and in the coastal region of Tyre and Sidon, again he met the need of the child of a Canaanite woman. By word and by deed, Jesus was widening the table of grace throughout his ministry, including those outside the family of Abraham. I would suggest that this tells any who consider themselves privileged in their relationship with God that we should be seeking to take the initiative in widening and lengthening the table, not building higher fences, restricting those who may come and feast. Jesus' inclusivity, though, was not just seen in terms of race or ethnicity, family heritage, or national origin. It was also seen in his willingness to overlook and reach beyond matters considered to be moral absolutes by some of his peers. Jesus set an example of including, despite the existing standards of morality. Where do we see that? Do you remember the story of Simon the Pharisee being offended because Jesus was not put off by the attentions of a woman with a reputation? Jesus then told Simon a parable regarding love, indicating that this woman loved much because she had been forgiven much. Do you remember the story? And then what about inviting himself to supper at the home of Zacchaeus, the tax collector? One of the critiques Jesus faced repeatedly was that he would sit down to eat with notorious sinners, with tax collectors even. I'm sure if you take the time, you will find other examples. I'm just trying to be brief here. I would suggest the takeaway is that we should follow the example of Jesus and be gracious toward any and all regardless of any contemporary moral values today. If others become offended, we just remind them that what we're doing is modeled by Jesus himself, and we're doing as he commanded. Now, I've not bothered to cite chapter and verse here on these various incidents, but if any request a transcript, I will produce one that has the references for each of those incidents that I have mentioned. So let's take it the next step. Today, where might we see examples? Now, I've not seen this yet. I've only read about it, but there's a recent movie by Mark Wahlberg recounting the true story of someone named Father Stu. Mark Wahlberg comments, perhaps the biggest lesson audiences can learn from Father Stu is nobody is beyond redemption. Eric Markham once penned. He drew a circle that shut me out. Heretic, rebel, a thing to flout. But love and I had the wit to win. We drew a circle that took him in. What kind of circle will we draw? What will we build? Fences or bridges? Will we extend hospitality or withhold it? It's not a small question. And I would suggest it is one where too often Christians, too often the church, too often we have been on the wrong side. This is the good news which we have received, in which we stand, and by which we are saved if we hold it fast, that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day, 
that he appeared first to the woman, then to Peter and the twelve, and then to many faithful witnesses. We believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus Christ is the first and the last, the beginning and the end. He is our Lord and our God. Amen. To wrap up this video, we have a charge, then a hymn, then the blessing before the closing hymn. Jesus loved us so much that we may love others. We go out in peace to love and serve the Lord. We do so praying, O come and dwell in me, this next hymn. May God, who has made you a new creation, give you the grace to grow in faith, hope, love, and justice. We all say, Amen. Sing praise to God who reigns above, in keeping with our psalm today, 